What's going on guys and welcome to my new series, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Bossing. This series was voted for by my viewers because this is what you guys wanted to see. There's going to be an influx of newer players and even some older players that may have never tried these bosses and my aim is to bring you guys a method that is going to be very easy for you guys to learn these bosses so you can get your first few kills. And I'm sure you guys noticed by the title that this guide is going to be covering the brand new boss, the Alchemical Hydra, which is located in the dungeon in the Kibos Lowlands. The Alchemical Hydra boss is a new Slayer boss that requires a Slayer level of 95 or higher to fight it. It is assigned by the new Slayer Master, Konar, who is located on the top of the mountain in the Kibos Lowlands. Now normally in bossing guides I would put what I recommend you to have as far as levels but if you are a player with level 95 or higher slayer you should be more than equipped to kill this boss with no problem so I will not be doing any required levels here. In order to get to the alchemical hydra you will want to use the fairy ring code CIR to teleport to the base of the mountain and take the agility shortcut which is level 62 up to the top of the mountain head a bit more north take the elevator south and you will then be in the new dungeon now once in this new dungeon you will be able to walk around in the opening chamber but if you want to go and fight any of the other creatures in here you will need some granite boots brimstone boots or boots of stone to walk around as you will take rapid damage if you do not have those now the granite boots, they were expensive when the release happened, their price has dropped, but since we're going to be using range at the Alchemical Hydra, you might not want to use these because they do give a negative range attack bonus. Boots of Stone do not, and they can be purchased from a Slayer Master. Once you have your boots on and all your gear, you will run north to the northern chamber, and then follow that around, which will take you to the Alchemical Hydra's instance. Yes, this boss is in an instance, so if you die, your items will be lost. However, if you do die, you can talk to this little blue guy outside of the Alchemical Hydra's chamber to reclaim your items. Similar to other instances in RuneScape, you will have to pay a fee. For the Alchemical Hydra, the fee is going to be 100,000 GP to get your items back. Now the Alchemical Hydra is a Slayer boss, it's not an endgame boss, so it's not going to be that difficult to learn how to fight it, and it's not going to be that difficult to accumulate a large amount of kill counts. The kills are a little lengthy, but the loot isn't bad, it does have two rolls on the drop table for each kill, similar to some other bosses in RuneScape, so that helps out with the GP per hour. As for its stats, the notable one is the defense level. The Alchemical Hydra only has a defense level of 100. so. In that sense, you're going to be wanting using a Bandos God Sword here if you are bringing a defense lowering weapon with that special attack. The Bandos God Sword offers a flat level reduction in defense reduction when you land a special attack. So you can hit with max stats in upwards of around 70 damage or more with the Bandos God Sword, which would take the defense level down to 30. If you were using a Dragon Warhammer, it only hits for 30% of the defense reduction, so if you land one spec, it would only take the defense level down to 70, so the Bandos God Sword is going to be what you're going to be wanting to use. As for the Alchemical Hydra's weakness, it is going to be the ranged method of combat with only a defensive stat of plus 45. So this brings us to our three best in slot items, respectively in order. The Twisted Bow, because the Alchemical Hydra has a magic level of 260, followed up by the Blowpipe, and following that is going to be the Dragon Hunter Crossbow. Up on the screen now is going to be our first gear setup, and this is going to be the high tier gear setup. Now this setup is very expensive, obviously, because it does have the Twisted Bow in it, but you don't need a Twisted Bow to kill this boss, I promise. It will be just as easy with either of the other ranged weapons that I listed off. Now this Slayer boss will only be able to be killed on task when assigned by Konar, so that means you will be using your imbued Slayer helmet, which does give you that 15% increase to damage and accuracy when using the ranged attack style. You'll be using an Ava's Assembler, Accumulator, or a Ranging Cape, Necklace of Anguish, or an Amulet of Fury. For the Twisted Bow setup, I decided to go with Dragon Arrows because they do hit the hardest. Armadale Chestplate and Chain Skirt, Barrow's Gloves, Granite Boots, and an Archer's Ring imbued. In the inventory for this setup, I have a Bastion Potion, which is ranging paired with Super Defense, Antidote Plus Plus because the boss can poison you, Stamina Potion for the trip there if you are using the Fairy Ring, Four Super Restores, which can also be replaced with Prayer Potions, fill up your inventory with Sharks, and a method of teleportation to get yourself out when the trip is over, or if you get in a pinch and you don't want to pay that 100,000 GP to reclaim your items. 
Now this next setup is considerably cheaper as for the overhead cost. I will be going with once again the imbued Slayer Helmet, Ava's Assembler, Necklace of Anguish which can be swapped out with a Fury. In the Blessing slot or Ammo slot I have the Rada's Blessing which is a reward from the Elite Karen Diaries which I have already finished. But if you have not finished that you will want to use some other blessing, any of them will work. The Toxic Blowpipe. God Dehyde, top and bottom, which you can also use any one that you want. They will all work. Barrow's Gloves, Boots of Stone, and an Archer's Ring imbued. As for the inventory, one Bastion Potion, one Antidote Plus Plus, a Stamina Potion, five Prayer Potions, which can also be switched out with Super Restores if that's what you have, 18 Sharks, a Dramon Staff to use the Fairy Ring to get there. I usually don't need this, but I threw it in the screenshot anyways and a construction cape or you might want to replace those with house teleport tablets. Next we will talk about the Hydra, how its attacks work, how you'll want to kill it successfully, and how you will want to set up the bossing room so you can make it easier on yourself by knowing where to click and when to click. First we will talk about the Hydra itself and its attack mechanics. As for the Hydra's attacks, it has two attack styles which are ranged and magic and it alternates between these attacks. Now no matter what, these attacks are very predictable and will always be the same. When you enter the room, it will start using an attack style, and it will use that attack style three times. So if it's a magic attack, it will be three magic attacks, then it will switch to range. Once it uses three ranged attacks, it will then switch back to magic, and it is like this all the way through the kill until the final phase of the Hydra kill. The Alchemical Hydra does have four different phases while you are fighting it, and these will have five, four, three, and two heads and change color accordingly to each phase. The phase will change after you have dealt more than 25% of its maximum health, so at 75, 50, and 25% it will change phases. The first phase is going to be the five head phase where it is green. During this phase, the Alchemical Hydra will throw out an acid attack after its first three attacks while you are in the room. All you need to do to avoid this is move two squares out of the way where the splats hit and you will take no damage. But if you do take damage, it's not very much. Four, five, six, and sevens. You just don't want to hit, get hit by multiple attacks. The next phase is going to be the four-headed phase where the Hydra turns blue. During this phase, the Alchemical Hydra will spawn a electricity attack after its first three attacks of this phase. This attack will spawn multiple points of electricity traveling along the floor which will move towards you. If they hit you, they will root you and you will take damage. The next phase is the three-headed phase where it will turn red. During this phase, you will have some time to damage the Hydra and then it will walk towards the middle of the room and start spawning fire. If you are hit by this fire, you will take a decent amount of damage and you will burn for several ticks afterwards taking additional damage. In order to avoid this, you will just walk off the fire as it trails you, which I will show you in the kill clip following the explanation to this boss. The final phase, the Hydra will turn black, and during this phase it is referred to as the Jad phase because it will always be switching its attack after one attack. So if it starts with ranged, it will start switching to magic, then ranged, then magic. After the first three attacks, the Hydra will again throw a poison attack near you. You will want to run out of the way and avoid this, otherwise you will take damage. If you stand on the splat, you will take rapid damage and it will deplete your hit points. After that attack, you will continue just switching your prayers back and forth as its attack style indicates until you finish the kill. Here I would like to show you guys the chamber and how I have it set up. Now the way I have this set up is I am using a third party client, Rune Light, which allows me to mark the tiles on the floor. Now this isn't absolutely necessary, but it does help out. Now here you can see these tiles marked on the floor, and the numbers popping up now will indicate where I'm going to move as each next step of the boss starts. Moving to these tiles in their numbered succession will set up the Hydra boss in an optimal location to transition to the next phase. Now also on this screenshot, you can see four big squares that are colored blue, green, and red. Sorry if you're colorblind. Blue is in the northwest, green is in the northeast, and red is in the southeast. Now you will need to position the Hydra over these depending on what color phase that you are on. When you enter the room and the Hydra is green, you will want to place it on the red square. This is the opposite of the combat triangle. Green indicates range, which is weak to melee, which is red. After this, you will position it on the green square for the blue phase, move it over to the blue square for the red phase, and finally, during the black phase, you will not want it to be standing on any of these as it will empower the Hydra. 
And now that we have gotten all of the precursor information out of the way, I can go ahead and show you guys a clip of a kill and I will talk you guys through each phase of the Hydra kill. So here in the clip, I am just outside of the Hydra chamber and I'm going to be potting up first and then I will be activating my preserve prayer and my protect from range and entering the chamber. First thing I will do is head over to square number one, which is going to drag it onto the red square. You can see it's using a magic attack, which I switch to magic attack. And after three attacks, I will switch to the range attack, position myself on square two for the acid and move to square three. Square three will position the Hydra just above the green square, which will allow me to transition it into the blue phase. Now that the Hydra is transferred into the blue phase, I run to square four, drag it onto the green square, and it has now lowered its defense in this phase. I'll move to square five over here in the very northeast corner of the room to help avoid the electric attacks that it will spawn now. As you can see on the ground, these electric attacks are moving across the ground heading towards me. Once they get about two to three squares away from you, you will click into the northwest corner and run all the way there. This will always help you avoid the electrical attacks. Now at square six, the Hydra is positioned for me to move to square seven and drag it to the blue square once it turns red. And now I have moved to square seven and it is red, so I will continue to do damage. Shortly after here, once it takes the damage from the geyser, I will move to the final square, which will drag it out into the middle of the room. Now I prefer to do it here because of the fire placement. It will allow you this whole corner to move around and walk off the fire. You'll want to turn off your run energy and start walking as the fire is trailing you. Like I said earlier, if it hits you, it will do damage and make you burn for a few ticks. After the Hydra's first attack, you'll have two more ticks before you can stop walking from the fire and you will return to killing the Hydra. Now before the Hydra goes into its black phase, you'll want to pay attention to what attack style it is using because once it turns into the black phase, it will use the opposite attack style once it starts. So it started, it was using mage and now it is going to start with range. I will switch my prayers every attack to avoid the jad attacks and after this third attack here, I will begin to run when the attack animation starts to avoid the poison. Now from here, it is smooth sailing as long as you can hit your prayer switches and block every attack. Be wary of this phase because it will hit over 50 if you miss a prayer switch. It's not a guaranteed 50, but it can happen. And with that, your kill is done and you can go ahead and pick up, complete the same method for every kill after this and you are smooth sailing all the way to your Dragon Hunter Lance that I'm sure you guys are all trying to get. So last but not least, I went ahead and compiled a loot screenshot of you guys for my first Hydra task. I killed 182 Hydras on the launch day to see how much I could make. Now unfortunately, I didn't come away with any uniques that I could actually use. I actually did get the Hydra's eye and claw to go towards the ring, which I have since finished. But as for the loot screenshot you see on the screen, 23,854,553 GP. I wish I could tell you guys what I made per hour, but I really didn't keep track of how long it actually took me to do the whole task. As for the cash drops, very plentiful, 2,059,000 GP. The runes were also very good, 6,200 astral runes, 5,600 blood, 5,500 deaths, and 4,300 chaos. As far as everything else goes, I saw a lot of mystic battle staff drops, 34 sets in all. 184 regular battle staffs which is a nice 1.4 mil addition as far as everything else goes pretty good loot all around it's not as good as Vorkath and it's not as good as Zalra but it can be really fun to do and it's still a decent money maker if you do get a Hydra task that is going to conclude my first bossing guide in the ultimate beginner's guide series i really hope you guys have enjoyed it and i really hope that it will help you guys to go out and kill some alchemical hydras it is a fun boss i have enjoyed killing it i have since got another task and i am still camping the hydra trying to get some more uniques 
So, as usual, if you like this video, please leave a thumbs up down below. They really help the video's popularity. And if you haven't done so yet, please tap that subscribe button on your way out. All of your support to my channel really means a lot to me. And last, if you so choose, you can check out my Patreon link down below. Any of your pledges really help me in producing more content and keeping my channel running as it should. With that, guys, I will see you guys on the next Ultimate Guide to Beginner Bossing. Take it easy, everybody. Peace.